Welcome everyone to Downshift, my name is Paulo. And my name is Matt, and this is my 2021 BMW M340i. And this is my G70 2021. And we've actually been living with each other's car for the past week, and today we're going to talk about just how they stack up to each other. Let's get into it. So we're going to cover a lot of categories, but the first thing that we're going to talk about is engine slash power. And I'll just cover off the uh, the figures first so we can get that out of the way and talk about like more like what it feels like. So the BMW B58, three liter straight six turbo, iconic. Uh, 382 <laughs> horsepower and 369 pound feet. That's on paper. It's been dynoed closer to 400-ish plus whatever. Um, 3.3 twin turbo V6 in the Genesis. A little bit less horsepower, 365, but more torque. 376 pound feet. Um, just real quick, my notes were on mine. Very broad power band. You've got power pretty much everywhere. Very quick from a dig, mm -hmm. uh, and then very smooth. The yeah. straight six is incredibly smooth, if not lacking a little bit of character. This yeah. feels very clinical in the way that it makes power. Yours, what I liked about yours was you have a more unique vibration, a little bit more unique tone and sound to your engine. Uh, and the tune feels incredibly fast at high speeds. Like there's big horsepower in there now. Yeah, yeah, so the notes I had, M340, I definitely more, more power stock, like by a mile. I think with the tune, I have a JB4 MAP2 tune. Um, I definitely think this has more power. I saw a dyno, I think it kicks the, the torque to the wheels close to 500, it's like 460, Crazy. 480, so. And then horsepower, um, Closer to 400 at the wheels with that with the map too, which is pretty cool. But the M340 definitely much more linear power band, um, a bit more predictable. Definitely better off the line. Uh, the G70 has to kind of like build boost, but it's kind of fun when you're not in boost and then you you finally hit the boost. This was interesting, yeah, because when I borrowed it, you had just gotten the tune done, mm -hmm. so you'd driven it for like a couple of days. Yeah. And then I took it home from you for when we were going to exchange for a couple of days and. Like, it almost felt like, because I had it in auto, when I would floor it, it would do a downshift, yep. of course, but then it almost felt like it was doing another downshift. It was like another half second to a second, where then it was just insane power after that. Mm -hmm. So what it was actually doing is actually downshifting one, and then it must have been spooling building and building yeah. boost, and then it's just off. Yep. Because I'm watching it shift gears, and it's not downshifting again, that's just the tune. And yeah. it feels like crazy powerful, but it's stepped. It's instead of like a like a like a Linear, wave build, yeah. it seems almost stepped, yeah. like a gear shift, which is interesting. Yeah, um, the way that this thing makes power just kind of feels like effortless. It's just like always there at all times. This feels like it's working a little bit harder to make power, but it's also making a lot of power now because we're gonna try to shoot drag videos this this year with these cars. So from a dig versus from a roll, I think will be really interesting to see yeah. stock versus tuned. I day before again day before right. Yeah, I think yours will definitely win off the line. I think I will give you more uh, competition from a from a role. But yeah, I'm really <laughs> eager to see how it does. And I'm also really eager to see how you do behind both cars at Road America. Oh, when we do the track? Yeah. The track, I think, will be really interesting because it is not a big power track. Right. But we should be able to stay in second gear for most of it. Mm -hmm. So even with a higher you know, rev at second gear, maybe the tune will still work in your favor. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll yeah, I'm, see. I'm eager to see. Yeah. Um, let's talk about transmission then. Do you want to start? Yeah. So just your typical eight speed here. Um, the experience that I had with the ZF is that it's paired very nicely with the B58. <laughs> um, I think hands down, no question, the ZF eight speed is uh, far superior to the eight speed in the, the G70. I kind of had the feeling like, this this ZF with BMW Shift Logic is very much like the B58 in the sense that it's like it's almost like a cheat code. Like in casual driving, it's as smooth as any other you know mm -hmm. torque converter. But then at the limit, when you're driving hard, like it almost has the snap and and rapid shift that you would get from like a DCT. Yeah. So it's just like this gearbox with the BMW Shift Logic is is just kind of OP. Yeah, and yours I'm is good. It's just, this is great. I've also had issues with, uh, you have to reset, I'm forgetting the terminology now, but basically the transmission learns how you shift. Oh yeah, we were on the track and you were in smart mode, I think. Yeah, well, I was just in normal mode, but oh, basically then we were in second gear the whole time doing a lap. And then after that, every time I went from like third to second, it would 
downshift really aggressively because it learned that that's what we yeah. were doing on the track. Yeah. So I had to reset, I think they're called the, adap the, the adaptives. I had to do it then, and now I need to do it again. And it's just such a pain because it's something you can't do by yourself. You have to do it at a dealership and the closest dealership's like an hour away. So yeah, I've had issues helpful. with the transmission. It's also just, yeah, I mean, it's just, the shifts are not as quick. They're not as crisp as the ZF, like, I think that's probably... I don't probably, think it's a bad gearbox, by the way. It's, it's just, it's just like, not quite as good. I think this is the biggest gap it has to your car. Really? Yeah. Okay. Fair it's enough. the biggest gap. Yeah, I didn't have an issue with yours. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, just not, so, it's just just not so quite good the same. there, yeah. Um, moving on then to, I guess, what the rest of the... Well, both cars do have all-wheel drive. I've got the X-Drive, you've got the H-Track or whatever yeah. Genesis calls it. Um, but then, so fuel economy, this I think is one of the biggest differences. Yeah, Because this is I, I took both cars in similar temperatures. Now granted it was like 14 degrees, but I took both cars on like a hundred mile round trip commute thing. And I mean, in general, this, it seems like no matter how I drive it, I'm gonna get somewhere between 28 and 32 MPG, even 34 if I'm like really driving casually yeah. and like mostly highway. Um, but then yours, and uh, granted it was cold, 20 MPG over 100 miles in eco mode, and that was like all, all, all highway. And I, I'm sure part of that is due to the tune, it's a little bit thirstier. Yeah, and I mean, I, I probably, maybe a little bit, but I, I probably should have, we should have took the tune off when you did that. Um, but to be honest, me personally, I really rarely check what my MPG is, like it's just not really a factor for me. You um, just don't care about the planet. I do care about the plan, <laughs> but I don't kidding. care about my FPG. But yeah, I <laughs> yours is obviously superior in that regard too. But I, and I guess I meant when I said the transmission, it was the biggest gap. It was like the biggest gap that I would consider that buying you would the like car. Care about. Yeah, care about. Like, yeah, and and to be like, we're we're talking about this in order to be thorough. But you're buying a sports sedan. This fuel economy is probably not at the top of your list. It is impressive. But I do care. Like, how much more efficient? Yeah, that's BMW I think the, the biggest thing that impressed me is like this, and this is what I said uh, when we were talking power. It's like your car seems to be working harder to do it mm -hmm. versus this maybe it's just a straight six you know natural way that it makes power but it seems like it's almost effortless in the way it makes power and it also is you know super efficient so yeah. it's just it, it's just b58 things i guess you know i yep. don't know what's next what's our next category um, i take my glove off Bring i think the glove. next thing was drive quality so casual driving yeah, so casual driving like dailying yeah let's let's have you go so I, I feel very strongly about this point. <laughs> yes, I would say in the current spec, how these things are both laid out. Yes. The M3, the M340 is a lot harsher of a daily ride, like hitting bumps. It's just like a hundred percent. So I think that the G70 handles bumps better. I think that it feels. Well, I guess I'm, I'm jumping to spirited driving, but um, yeah, I just think day to day, it just this is a lot more comfortable behind the wheel. Uh, granted, you don't have the adaptive suspension on right here. that's what i was gonna say is like this is the static set but it's like it's so stiff to the point where you were like is this thing on coilovers like is this thing on race shocks or yeah. race springs like it does feel really stiff like n like an m3 probably shouldn't be this stiff maybe in sport mode an m3 should but like the adaptive suspension is an absolute must mm -hmm. for this thing because it is incredibly stiff on the road it's great when you want it to like dart around but I don't always want to do that. Sometimes I just want to go someplace in the morning without spilling coffee down my chest. It, you know? it was honestly insane. And it's also kind of funny because this is lowered on springs and yeah. like this still isn't as harsh as that. Yeah, no, I the ride that you have is, is actually really sophisticated, very refined. I love the way that your car mm -hmm. rides specifically. That's very good. There's only one thing that I thought was a little bit strange and it's the fact that, I don't know if you've noticed this, but like at highway speeds, and we've It'll got a lot bounce. of construction around us, it gets like lateral shifts yeah. side to side. Yep. You feel that? Yeah. Is that, did that happen before you put the big tires on it? Cause you've got a lot of rubber now. Yeah, no, I think it has to do with like the camber with the wheels and stuff okay. that uh, when they lower to put the bigger tires and wheels on, um, yeah, I think it's like a camber thing where it kind of bounced. So we, we qualify that under like user error, not Genesis error. Yeah, that's not a, error, it's not a Genesis error. And it's not really an error. I kind of like, it spices things up. You it don't does, know you're it gonna, does. You know, you're going to a little jolt left or right. <laughs> the first time I got on the highway, I was like, what's happening? Yeah. What's happening? It, well, it's it, not that It bad. also it's follows, if you're on concrete, it'll follow the grooves in the road because yeah. it's sport. It'll tram line a little bit. Yeah, it's sport it's, tires. It's and, got more aggressive tires. It's got really wide tires. Yeah. I, I assumed that was part of it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come like that stock. That's just if you've got a really aggressive setup like like we do here um spirited drive yeah handling so my 
My consensus on this is I think that in current form with my bigger yes. bigger tires and wheels, I can handle higher speed corners uh, just with more grip. Yep. And I think that there's more feel in the steering wheel in the G70 than there is in the M340. Yes. Do we have steering as its own thing? Because No, I, think... I thought I was just going to talk about it here. Okay. No, I think you're right. Because um, that's, that's exactly how I felt. Like, the, I think the first time that I drove your car, before I even had this, I was like, I think I texted you like the second I got home. I was like, dude, your steering is like actually really good. Mm -hmm. Like even just across the board for modern standard of like sport sedan, sport cars, like there's actually feedback, there's feel, it's organic, it's natural, it doesn't feel over boosted, it doesn't feel ultra heavy. Um, I'm just gonna go through my notes real quick. On the BMW, really sharp front end, but yeah. the steering, I don't feel anything. No. Like the steering is really heavy, especially at lower speeds. I think they do that to like make up for the fact that there's no feel but like, I don't feel anything. And maybe that'll change when we're on the track. Maybe it's a tire thing, I don't know, but I really don't feel anything. I feel way more on your car. Um, but the weight balance is great here. The chassis strength is great here. And the traction really allows, the traction control really allows me to like dial in a little bit more back end slip. So there's more like fun yeah. programmed into the car. And then for you, I had, you have a lot more high speed grip in a, in a corner laterally, obviously with bigger tires. Um, with traction on, a little bit more prone to understeer, that's kind of normal. Um, but yeah, I have right here in, in big letters, best thing is the steering, way better than the BMW. Mm -hmm. Chassis feels good, front end is a little bit less sharp. I think that comes down to suspension with this being really stiff. Yeah. Um, gearbox is a little bit slower, but I have still brilliant fun to drive because it is. And I really love that your car has the active bolsters on the seat. Yeah. So when you go into sport mode, it hugs you. Yeah, that is And then cool. when you go out, it's like, doesn't add a lot but like my my seats aren't that bolstered but it's just like a mental like it's a fun right. kind of thing it feels more dramatic and yeah. intense and i like that yeah i do like that a lot i guess i i still think like if i had to pick a car to go do a like a spirited drive in like what would i pick and i think all the things that i said that i liked about this i still think i would take the m340 just because of the powertrain pairing it's yeah. just that good i just think it'd be that much more fun to uh, manually shift and it's just like those are things that yes. I could manually shift in my car but again it's like it's so slow it's it's like shift by wire well yeah so the one thing and I think I forgot to mention it here but like the one thing that I was like kind of shocked by is on your shifter like mine you go into drive and then you can flip it you can go to drive then down into sport or you can shift it over and be in like manual mode mm -hmm. and like just paddles yours doesn't have no one. so like I can flip a paddle but then like it's gonna go back into will, yep. auto shift or whatever. Yeah. And like that for me is, that's a, that's a L. Yeah. A little bit, you know, without no, being it rude. Is. But, it is, no it isn't. But it's, it's just strange, like this is a sports sedan and that's a, that seems like a simple thing that they could fix and maybe they have in, in future cars. So looks, um, here are my thoughts. So in a bubble, I think that the M340 looks better. Really? In a bubble. But, wow. I think in reality, <laughs> it looks like every other 3 Series, yeah. and I think that the G70 is more unique. So, in reality, I like the G70 more, even though I think, like, subjectively, the M340 looks brilliant. Yeah. I think, I love the spec of my car. I love the mineral white with the black accents. That's exactly how I wanted it. And I think we talked about this on the phone. Like, in the spec that it is, the white on the 3 Series versus the black on the Genesis, they look as good as they can look. Mm -hmm. Like this is the best spec for a three series. This is the best spec for a G70. Like if you took the black, all black spec on your car and put it on my car, I don't think it would look as good as it does on your car. Right. I really like the way that your car looks. And I really like just how unique it is because I never see G70s or not that often. There's one here in the parking lot as we're shooting, yeah, which that is was cool. Funny. But like, you never I see saw them. that as I was pulling in, I got excited. Yeah. You know, you see three series constantly. So it's not that interesting. You know, if it's, it's kind of like if you know, you know kind of thing. And you know, the front splitter and the wing kind of give it away. Mm -hmm. But this, especially when it's done up like yours, you're like, that guy gets it. Yeah. That guy is cool. Well, We'd probably get along. And you know, I, I obviously had to do some work with getting the wheels flush with, um, <clears throat> with the, the size of the car. And, and, but you know, it's like stock. I really don't like the way these necessarily look. There's just way too much. Um, kind of space here in the wheel well that does, just does not look good. But Yeah, 
I mean, going from driving your car and then coming out and looking at mine, like the tires are so skinny and yeah. they're kind of tucked in. And yeah. I'm just like, I wasn't really bothered by this, but now I've spent three, four days in the Genesis and now I'm like, oh, that looks kind of lame. Yeah, when you have some nice flush <laughs> flenders with, uh, with flenders, the wheels. Yeah. <laughs> the flenders. Ned Flenders. <laughs> Um, but yes, no, 100%. I, I love the stance of your car. I love the wheels that you chose too. Like, those are very similar to the wheels that I would get from, from HRE. From yeah, kind of like a bit of aggressive look. Yeah, it's like a multi-spoke. Yeah. Really, really, really pretty. Um, trunk. trunk. Cargo, this will keep it pretty quick. Yours is deeper. It's just deeper. It's yeah. just a little bit, I mean, these are marginal differences deeper that down. we're gonna start talking about here. Deeper down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a little bit more floor. Yeah. Um, and I can drop the seats. The weird thing about mine is I can drop the seats from the trunk but oh. I can't drop the seats from the rear seat. That's weird, mine's opposite. It's very strange. Don't know why, that's just something that I noticed, yeah. but yeah, weird. Um, rear seat, I felt a little bit more cramped than yours. Yeah, but I've But more specifically, room. the thing that was weird is like, I had decent knee space, more than I thought I was gonna have, but my feet were kind mm. of like trapped. Yeah. And maybe that's just how the seat's positioned, but just a tiny bit more space in the rear, I think, in mine. I agree. Yeah. Luxury, build materials, go. So I had, um, I think that the G70 has nicer build materials and leather. A um, thousand percent. But I do think, and, and I also think that mine has a cool seat, yours doesn't. So from like a Lux perspective, I think the G70 wins out in my opinion. I would a hundred percent agree. This is one of the things that I'm a little bit annoyed with my car. It's like, I don't have the Vernasca or whatever leather. I have like the Sensatec, which is like the base interior. And it just doesn't feel like I want a BMW to feel like. Mm -hmm. You know, I paid almost 50 grand for this thing used. Like, I want it to feel a little bit higher quality. Like I get into your car, the leather is really good. It feels high quality. It feels like conditioned, like the cow hides were conditioned by Garnier Fructis. <laughs> you know, you've got cooled seats. Like my seats don't breathe. Mm -hmm. You were in it on like a warm day, a weirdly warm day. And you're like, dude, my back is sweating. It was like 65 and I was like, yeah, dude, my back yeah, is Like it just doesn't gone. really breathe. And then the armrest is like, it's not really Chevy hard, Trax bad. It's like really hard plastic on the left side of it. But yeah, it's like. like not leather. Yeah. And then the dash is like kind of soft touch plastic dash, whatever, but it's not like leather, like yours is leather wrapped. So the Genesis is, in my opinion, the better built interior. Well, better materials. Yeah. There was a slight squeak that I got or creak that I got from your center console. It's if your knee rests on it, it's really weird. My elbow was on it, yeah. yeah but elbow, I took yeah. it off and then it was fine. It's so weird. But like I was that. like, yeah. that's interesting. That's just, that was that's the just only Jenny thing. doing Jenny things. Just Jenny doing Jenny. But I love the fact that you have cooled seats. Yeah. That's awesome. I, so from a Lux, I think the G70, but I do think like, I am curious how we would, like how it would compare if you actually had the better yeah, leather the nicer and stuff leather. like that. Yeah. We'll um, probably get a press car this year with the nicer interior three series. Technology, I mean, hands down, M340. You have a fully digital gauge cluster. Um, you have a heads up display, which you can get in the G70. I just didn't spec it. Oh, you can? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Wireless Apple CarPlay in yours. Can't get that in mine. Yeah. Um, we can both get power trunks, but we don't have it. <laughs> Poverty spec. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I think just the digital, the fully digital gauge cluster to me is probably like the biggest thing that you would interact with on a day to day that like I think mine's missing. I just have like a half basically. Yeah. Well, and you've got some more driver assist stuff, like more of the lane keep. Yeah. Which works okay, mm -hmm. but mine doesn't have it at all. So, you know, and yeah. I think you could get that. But again, it's like one of the things that wasn't spec'd and also like your lexicon speakers significantly better yeah and i don't know actually where i had that one but i did want to talk about that oh maybe i had it in like day-to-day -day driving but yeah the uh the bass speakers in the m340 are i'm sorry but they're trash they're like okay they're so bad. at the low end yeah but when you start to introduce any volume or power it's just like well, it's complete well, like nothing happened when i was at like 75 like, percent volume is which is like loud in my car if i go yeah. to like 75 percent full i'm like this is good enough like in yours i was like i cannot believe this is like 75 dude yes it's, that's exactly what i'm it's saying it's like quiet there's nothing there there's like there's no like voltage or amps it seems like really pushing yeah pushing like the, to it. the difference between like 50 and 100 percent volume is yeah is like no different mm -hmm. like there's just there's all fall off up it, there to me it's like it's like tv speakers like a flat screen tv speakers yeah. And then it's like sound, versus sound like, bar. yeah, soundbar. <laughs> like that's kind of what it's agree. like. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, the last thing that I had was just price and I wrote it down, um, MSRP new versus now. 
MSRP, I think this is like a couple, like a few grand more, like three to five. And now if you want to get a used one, like you can spend like $10,000 less, just about eight to 10 on a Genesis G70 with the 3.3 and get pretty much what we have here, like a nicer interior, nicer ride. You're going to just spend more money on the BMW. Yeah. So that's an L over here, but B58, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think... I guess here's the question, like obviously you have that car and I have this car. Yeah. I think if I were to redo it, I would probably get an M340. I would probably buy an M340 again. Yeah. Like I love that car, mm -hmm. but I mean, it is, it's just, this it is, is just eight, like $10,000 cheaper. Like, right. Yeah. It's when you don't look at price, it's easy to pick this. Yeah. But then when you're like, oh, man, well, yeah. I could get a better ride, nicer interior quality, like for $10,000 less, that's a big amount less. Yeah, it's a lot less money. I mean, it's it's still I still love the Genesis, and it'll probably be the car that I have the longest. I hope, yeah. which isn't a really it's not a hard record to break, but um, I do think next car is probably going to be hopefully an M three forty. Maybe this one. It might even be this exact <laughs> one. And then I'll buy a Lexus LC five hundred, and then we'll be the happiest that we've ever been. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so then I think the last thing that I just wanted to ask was. Um, we covered, are you happy with your car, equal money, which one would you have? But do you have anything else planned? I know you just did the tune, you've done um, springs, spacers, wheels, I think you've done brakes. Yep. Is there anything else that you have planned currently? I also, um, like, did a chrome delete. Oh yeah, you wrapped all the accents. Yep, wrapped all the accents. Which was, yes, good. Um, yeah, upgraded the brake pads, the brake rotors. I don't and the two now lowered it. I don't think I will do anything else to it. No exhaust? No. That's what I have <laughs> going on this coming week. Yeah, what do you have? Um, so, and we'll cover this in the next video, which will come out before this, so we've already covered it. But my things that I don't like about the car are uh, the interior doesn't feel nice enough, the springs are too stiff, and it's too quiet, and the steering's a little numb. Um, the thing that I can do easiest to fix that is an exhaust. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with AWE to do their uh, touring non-resonated because I've got a stock downpipe. So exhaust is going on the car this spring or summer uh, whenever they can manufacture it. Because apparently they manufacture it or they build it to, to order. order. Huh, so yeah, I order it and then they make it. Um, but they've been super awesome to work with. So shout out to them. And um, that'll be what's coming next for my car. So with that, um, this has been interesting. We're going to take both these cars to the drag strip. We're going to take both these cars to the track and continue to shake them down together. But this, I think, is a first, a good first go. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, do a few more challenges um, against these two. Are you are you not planning anything else after the exhaust? Uh, Maybe I thought tires, tires. Yeah, tires. So there'll be some some stuff, but everything will what be about, on the channel. What about doing? Um, what about upgrading the suspension? I've thought about it. I've thought about it more recently. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens through the rest of this year. But yeah, exhaust will be first. Tires um, will probably be second also this year. And then we'll see what happens from there. I've got to replace also the front crack splitter and all yep. that stuff. So yeah. just some just some little tiny things. But leave it down in the comments which car you'd take home. Uh, and stay tuned for our incoming track series. Yeah, thanks guys for watching. All right, take care.